Greetings, brothers and sisters. So this headline's been up, this tab's been up on my toolbar now for three or four days. Um, Tina Knowles celebrates Beyonce's 40th with Sweet IG tribute. And when I saw this picture, I was like, what's Madonna doing <laughs> with Beyonce? What's Madam Expiration Day? It's like, <laughs> it's like some dude is, you know, uh, doing a Madonna lookalike contest. A Madam Expiration Date lookalike contest, which seems strange to me. And so I got some celebrity stuff I just want to get through to take these tabs down. But I got something that I consider to be very important. Something that's, um, you know, is essential to people in the so-called truth community. But let's blow through these other headlines here first. U.S. Today reporter slammed for playing victim after false Biden report. U.S. Today's fact checkers need a fact checker. U.S. Today's Daniel Funk, Daniel's Funky, Daniel Funky, the reporter behind the newspaper's botched report on President Biden watch fiasco when he looked at his watch in that Afghanistan uh, memorial service, has been hammered by critics on social media for playing the victim. Funky originally reported in a fact check Wednesday that accounts of President Biden checking his watch during the solemn transfer ceremony honoring 13 U.S. service members killed at the Kabul airport was partly false. Funky insisted that it occurred only after the ceremony. But the next day, USA Today issued a correction admitting, admitting Biden checked his watch multiple times during the ceremony as the Post accurately reported on its front page. However, it changed in its ruling from partly false to missing context. So they didn't even go the whole way. Funky then took to Twitter on Friday offering an apology. As many of you have already know, this story has been corrected. Biden checked his watch multiple times during the ceremony. I regret the error. Journalists and fact checkers are human. Yes, even me. We make mistakes. When we do, we correct them and try to make them right. Yeah, that's not, fact checkers don't get to be wrong, right? (laughs) You know, we're talking about facts and you blew this thing. Look at this guy. He looks like a funky and uh, (laughs) he looks funky to me. And so um, this is the media once again admitting it's lying. Angelina Jolie, I fared for my safety of my children and family while married to Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt, as you know, is a woo stealer. He stole my woo bit on Ellen. This is him stealing my woo bit on Ellen. Have a seat, everybody. Go ahead and catch your breath, Twitch. And uh, there's something that I want to talk about. And um, I'm sorry. I'm I'm kind of distracted right now. I just, I just. Woo! He's stealing my woo bit right now. My woo bit. My woo is so much better. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Woo! So he's stealing my woo bit right there. Just you know, and all these dopes don't know he's a he's a, a woo plagiarist. Let's see my little bit, Brad Pitt. (laughs) So he stole my woo bit. It goes on from there. It goes on for a while. But Angelina Jolie played um, Maleficent, obviously, who is Baphomet, who was a villain, an early Disney villain that they turned into a protagonist and a hero. And, you know, a... a, a, um, movie that was made for little children, her and the person who wrote, the woman who wrote the original Maleficent said when she got her wings cut off, it was a metaphor for R. So little kids could, you know, have that in their subconscious. They could see an R scene with, with a Baphomet, Maleficent, a former villain and some king, because that's how things are right now. And she is, you know, a much bigger player in evil. I mean, Brad Pitt, I assume, even though he's a woo stealer, 
seems to be a much better person. But, you know, she also went after Harvey Weinstein in her book, calls Angelina Jolie accusation brazenly untrue. She's a little late to the Harvey Weinstein party. Tori Spelling looks unrecognizable during late night out. She's 50 years old, and she's had her face completely restructured. That's what faces look like, this one as well, when they've had plastic surgery to this extent. And I don't know why they keep on doing it. It doesn't work. You look like a Barbie. You look fake. You know, you can't have human expressions anymore, right? Maybe in some pictures, they can make you look human with some Photoshop and touch-up. But when you're talking to a person who's had this much reconstructive surgery... There she is, what she used to look like, and this is what she looks like now, right? (laughs) And so, you know, you don't think people are going to notice, and when your face doesn't move and they're like, what's wrong? It's like you have a, you know, it's like you have a dead face, like the the nerves and the, I mean, nothing moves right, and then it's just a a one-way trip to Reptilianville from there. I mean, it doesn't work. Like, how many times (laughs) does it have to fail before celebrities realize it's, you know, never going to work out for him. You're going to get old. It's okay. Don't listen to Madam Expiration Day. Just age gracefully. It's okay to get old, and there's nothing wrong with it. In fact, it's actually a good thing. If you do it right, you're much happier when as you get older. Why America should suddenly prepare for a billion-dollar internet apocalypse, apocalypse caused by the sun. Can't say it right anymore. And so this is another one of these ideas of these solar flares. You know, when the magnetic poles shift and they're going to happen, it's talked about in uh, Heartfulness Whispers of the Brighter World, the magnetic field goes down for a little bit and these solar flares get into Earth, you know, atmosphere, and they can short out the whole electrical grid. They act like an EMP. There's a guy from MIT, former MIT guy, who his name's like Matt Stein or something like that. And he wrote a book called A Thousand Chernobyls, A Hundred Chern- Chern- Chernobyls, talking about how there's only one week of electricity, backup electricity at these nuclear power plants. And if the electrical grid goes down, all these plants will go Chernobyl, go, you know, China syndrome or whatever it was called, and, you know, implode. And America will no longer be a very nice place to live in. And so um, this is a possibility. Don't know if it's going to happen or not but it seems like it's pretty likely. See, the magnetic field blocks these solar flares or minimizes them. But if the magnetic field is down, the electrical charge, the atomic charge, nuclear charge from these solar flares acts like an EMP and can can short out the world's electrical grid. So, you know, that's possible. So I saw this the other day. Marine Lieutenant Colonel Schwarzschiller, relieved of his duty for calling out brass over Afghanistan. Good evening. My name is Lieutenant Colonel Stu Scheller, United States Marine Corps. I'm the current battalion commander for Advanced Infantry Training Battalion. I've been in the Marine Infantry for 17 years. Started my tour with Victor 1-8. It's the current unit that's doing perimeter security, dealing with the mess that's going on there. I, you can see open source reporting that there was an explosion and some people were killed. I know through my inside channels that one of those people that were killed was a someone that I have a personal relationship with. Won't go into more details because the families are still being notified. Not making this video because um, it's you know potentially an emotional time. Making it because I have a growing discontent and contempt for my perceived ineptitude at the foreign policy level, and I want to specifically ask some questions to some of my senior leaders. So this guy is a long-term military veteran, and I don't feel about the military like right-wing people do and so-called patriots do. I mean, I, you know, I talk about the military in a, it's a, it's a aggressive, you know, we have a big budgeted, our number one expense is the military and weapons, the military industrial complex. And it's uh, an evil that is, you know, taken over our system. And so this guy, Marine Lieutenant Colonel Swartz, still a relieved of his du- relieved of duty for calling out brass over Afghanistan. So he ended up being fired by, by the U.S. Marines for these questions. And just think about this. I mean, 
it's insubordination and there's a whole code of the military and what he does here you know he kind of knew he was going to be fired or whatever it is and so it's um you know something that was going to happen and it's based in fraternity level of the military but what, what he says here there's nothing in here that's so powerful you know because it's all true what he says and i'll say as a person that's not at 20 years um i feel like i have a lot to lose if you play chess you can only see two to three moves out because there's too many variables i thought through if, if i post this video what might happen to me especially if the video picks up traction if i have the courage to post it but i think what you believe in can only be defined by what you're willing to risk so if i'm willing to risk my current battalion commander seat my retirement my family's stability to say some of the things that i want to say i think it gives me some moral high ground to demand the same honesty integrity accountability from my senior leaders and so i want to start with we'll just use the marine corps my we'll just stick with the marine corps so in the current fallout of afghanistan a lot of marines were posting on social media and in response to that the commandant published a letter which is the service chief of the marine corps and i want to read from it it was dated 18 august so only a week ago the commandant sir you wrote some of you may be struggling with a simple question was it all worth it we want you to know that your service is meaningful powerful and important you fought for the marine to your left and the marine to your right you never let them down then you go on to say that you know if we're, we're struggling we should we should seek counseling which you know i get it people have killed people um I've killed people and I, and I seek counseling um, and that's fine. There's a time and place for that. But the reason people are so upset on social media right now is not because the Marine on the battlefield let someone down. That service member has always rose to the occasion and done extraordinary things. People are upset because their senior leaders let them down and none of them are raising their hands and accepting accountability or saying, we messed this up. So nothing he said so far is, is untrue. It's, it's true. And it isn't, you know, something that's bombshell classified information. It's something everybody knows, right? Everything he says is common knowledge. And he's in the military. He's not supposed to undermine missions. But the mission collapsed, right? Everyone knows it's a failure. You know, a 20-year, $2 trillion failure. So this isn't, you know, he's doing no damage to the, you know, the, the military and the Marine Corps that they haven't already done to themselves, right? And this is the senior le leadership he's talking about, and obviously the political aspect of the military. Not the strategic or execution level of the military, but the strategic level of the military, which is politics. You know, the politicians and the senior military leaders who made up these plans and agreed to a false war and lied about so many things. I'll get back into the Pat Tillman and Jessica Lynch part in a second. If an 05 battalion commander has uh, the simplest live fire incident EO complaint, boom, fired. But we have a secretary of defense that testified to Congress in May that the Afghan National Security Force could withstand the Taliban advance. We have chairmen of Joint Chief, who the commandant is a member of that, who's supposed to advise on military policy. We have a Marine combatant commander. All of these people are supposed to advise. And I'm not saying we've got to be in the in Afghanistan forever, but I am saying, did any of you throw your rank on the table and say, hey, it's a bad idea to evacuate Bagram Airfield, the strategic air barriers, before we evacuate everyone? Did anyone do that? And when you didn't think to do that, did anyone raise their hand and say, we completely messed this up? I've got battalion commander friends right now that are posting similar things, and they're saying, you know, wondering if it, all the lives were lost and, and if it was in vain, all those, all those people that we've lost over the last you know, 20 years. And he goes on to say that we're all part of a chain. While every link may not be tested, the strength of the chain is only as strong as each link, and you got to be, you know, good link, something like that. So again, nothing that's being said here was bombshell. Like nothing here is fireable. You know, outside the military, the person shouldn't be fired. Obviously, if you're in a corporation and you go up against your bosses, you might be fired. But there's nothing here that's like, oh, wow, this is some, you know, it's going to transform the conversation because he's giving out information that's, you know, either classified or other people don't have any access to. 
He's just stating, you know, basically what everybody knows about the complete failure of this war. And what I'll say is, and from my position, potentially all those people did die in vain if we don't have senior leaders that own up and, and raise their hand and say, we did not do this well in the end. Without that, we just keep repeating the same mistakes, this amalgamation of the economic slash corporate slash political slash higher military ranks are not holding up their end of the bargain. I want to say this very strongly. I have been fighting for 17 years. I am willing to throw it all away to say to my senior leaders, I demand accountability. And so he was fired for that and basically demanding accountability for this failure. And, you know, he can't demand anything because they're not going to do it, right? They're working for the military industrial complex. And so he was fired. And I'm going to contrast this with the rest of the war. And then I got something else kind of huge to get into about this. So I just covered this with the Pat Tillman story. You can watch it free on YouTube, especially now where I, it just makes so much more sense of the whole Afghanistan debacle. And they bring up Jex Jessica Lynch. Rambo image was based on lie, U.S. war hero Jessica Lynch. And so the military leadership, you know, this guy was just fired for telling the truth, right? This 17-year veteran who fought and, you know, was in gun battles, according to what he was saying. Somebody who, you know, is a frontline soldier, was a part of, you know, the military effort. And he demands accountability and says truthful things that he's fired. The truth about Jessica Lynch, you know, I told you the story. They wanted to make her a hero. Even Rachel Maddow, of course, it was when Bush was president. The Pentagon made up the since debunked heroics of POW Jessica Lynch, Lynch as she tried to avoid capture in Iraq. She didn't fire her weapon, even though they sounded like she was Rambo. They made up this complete story, right? And then she was injured, and the Iraqi military, whatever was left, the insurgents, took her and dropped her off at a hospital with no military guard. And they said they were torturing her. And then they wanted to get Pat Tillman involved, and they flew him over to Iraq to get him to be a part of this rescue. They waited to get a camera crew, even though she was in a hospital just waiting to be picked up. They brought in special forces with, uh, you know, a film crew to make it look like it was dramatic, even though there was no resistance or any enemy combatants. And then she came out and said, I didn't fire anything. I wasn't a hero. And they gave her parades and the media was complicit in this, right? BBC documentary exposes Pentagon lies, a stage rescue of private Jessica Lynch. You know, on top of that, Colin Powell was tricked into lying us into war. The, um, the Cheney administration, the Bush-Cheney administration, outed a CIA operative, Valerie Plame, because her husband, Joe Wilson, wrote an op-ed and said that it was a lie that uh, Saddam Hussein got yellow cake uranium from Africa, which turned out to be true, that Saddam Hussein did not get yellow cake uranium from Nigeria. And so a, you know, high ranking, I mean, multiple people in the Cheney administration, the neocon Cheney administration, outed a CIA officer, lied us into a war. I mean, they gamed the intelligence community and forced them to put out faulty intelligence and, you know, made up this whole big story that turned out to be fabricated. And Colin Powell, who was, you know, considered a war hero from the first Gulf War, was manipulated into ruining his reputation in front of the UN as America lied its way into this war. Then they lied about Jessica Lynch and, you know, so much more. I'll go through more things after we go through Pat Tillman. And nobody was fired. Nobody went to jail. Nobody was investigated. Nothing happened. So for lying, manipulating lying to the American people, lying to the UN, lying to, you know, the media lying, right? The media covering this and not doing any sort of fact-checking. The media just accepting this. Nobody's fired. 
No person in the media was fired. No person in the military was fired. Nobody was, you know, these are criminal activities. Nobody in the government was investigated. Nobody was impeached, right? These are big crimes. These are like high crimes. And this guy gets fired for telling the truth. Think about what's happening here. When you lie, you're rewarded. And when you tell the truth, you're not. You're fired. You're held accountable. For years, former POW Jessica Lynch kept the herd inside. The whole world basically watched me get rescued. It was a huge event. The United States has rescued an American prisoner of war. A 19-year-old woman, her name is Jessica Lynch. Jessica Lynch was being held in this Iraqi hospital. She's going to be coming off that plane. So now that it's been 12 years, people expect me to be fine. They see me out walking, they see me doing these interviews, but what no one really sees is is the hurt inside. Just wanted to be left alone. People are absolutely thrilled to see her. Still confused as to why they chose to lie and try to make me a legend when the real heroes of my fellow soldiers that day were legendary. And so again, nobody was fired for this, right? Nobody was held accountable for purposefully fabricating a story to promote the military industrial complex, uh, an illegal war, an immoral war, a war that was based in lies. Nobody, nobody held accountable. Now, going back to the Pat Tillman thing, you know, there were so many lies in cover up. They knew that he died because of a friendly fire. He was killed by the other half. They split up his unit. They're going through these canyon lands, and you can see this in the the documentary he was they were going through the canyon lands and they split up the union and the unit that was behind them started to fire on his unit soldier who killed pat tillman stated he just wanted to get into a firefight by his own admission he shot pat nearly decapitated him and so this is um you know i mean think about this right soldiers speak up a decade after pat T tillman's friendly fire death the true story of Pat Tillman's death and the cover-up that followed, there was multiple cover-ups. So there was a cover-up where they came out and said he died fighting the enemy. And everybody knew that wasn't true because there was multiple soldiers with Pat Tillman yelling at their, you know, their fellow, fellow soldiers to stop shooting at him, and they thought they were going to die. So they knew it was all friendly fire. There was you know, very little evidence that there was any enemy there's any Taliban in the area, I mean, at least that were firing on them. They might have been in the area, but you know, there wasn't really any substantial evidence that the unit that shot at Pat Tillman was um, being fired upon by the enemy. So they had any reason to fire on Tillman and his um, and his fellow soldiers, right? And so that was known. They immediately burned the uniforms, started the cover up, told everyone to start lying. The NFL and the military and the hijacking of Pat Tillman's story. Tillman's story, sad tale of military cover-up. Evidence shows Pat Tillman murdered, according to medical experts. So this is a sporting news. This is like actual sort of semi-mainstream media. This is from CNN. Soldier, Army ordered me not to tell the truth about Tillman. And that happened in the documentary. One of his best friends said he was told, multiple soldiers were told, not to say anything to Pat's brother and not to say anything to the family and not to say anything, you know, to anybody. Like, this didn't happen the way you saw it. That's what was said immediately. Immediately, the cover-up was put in. A letter went out all the way up to the President of the United States, I and mean, you'll see this in the documentary, and it said, you know, the Bush administration, Bush was going to give a speech, and it was going to be laden with Pat Tillman's heroics. And so they wanted to get all the details of, you know, what happened. And the letter basically said, well, you know, what we're saying isn't really true. And so there's some evidence of friendly fire. So you might not want to, you know, go too far on your, um, you know, endorsing this story in case it, you know, comes out, right? Because there's people that know about it. Same thing with SEAL Team 6. It's happened over and over again. And so we know that this um, there was multiple cover-ups. And then 
you know, the family pressed them. The mother was a great researcher. They tried to bury her in documents and they redacted everything, but they figured out, you know, her and some other people went through, you know, volumes of notebooks and got all the information and figured out all the lies and things like this. The father wrote a aggressive letter. He was a lawyer. And so then there was another story about the cover-up. They blamed a retired general who already quit. They smeared his reputation, took away a star, but it wasn't really just a slap on the wrist. He was a guy that was at the Pat Tillman, um, the Pat Tillman funeral. And so, um, you know, there was another level of cover up and then they went in front of the Senate and the Senate basically kissed Don, Don Rumsfeld, Dick Rumsfeld's butt, right. And just was slathering all over him. You can see that the family was just disgusted. So there are four or five layers of ghoulish cover up and nobody was held accountable, right? Nobody was held accountable for wasting $2 trillion in Afghanistan and giving all this weaponry to the Taliban. It's an epic failure for the multiple lies. I mean, if they'll lie to you about Patrick Tillman and Jessica Lynch, right? They use them as propaganda tools to convince other people to throw away their lives. The NFL is, you know, is, um, is working with the military as a recruiting tool, right? Bringing in, you know, Lincoln football to being a soldier in the military, all these things. And nobody has been account- held accountable for the, you know, whatever, the three, four trillion dollars that it cost in Iraq. You know, together these wars cost six, seven trillion dollars, who knows how much. All the weapons laws, the lies, all the weapons handed over to, you know, the opposition. You know, things just left there in the hands of the Taliban and ISIS and things now. All the, you know, all the treasure and the money and the loss of life, all the things that have been thrown away. And just finding out it's all lies and it was all lies from the beginning. Nobody held accountable. And yet this other guy who just asked for some accountability and tells the truth is fired. And that's what it is in America right now. There is a war against the truth, you know, and it's an epic war. I'm saying this because there was a show last night. It was some um, like female reporter for CNN. I've never heard of her before. I just watched it for a few minutes and it was down the rabbit hole. She was going down the rabbit hole and and it said, why do people promote conspiracy theories? And so you see this with CNN. They've used this information. They've used this line about why people are spreading misinformation, why people are, you know, spreading conspiracy theories. And somehow these people are all evil, right? Conspiracy theorists and people on the right, Trump supporters and, you know, whatever it is, are the number one villain right now. They're the people that are not going along with the agenda. They're the people that are causing problems. They are talked about on mainstream media, CNN and MSNBC and the networks by Hollywood celebrities and on social media, they are the targeted villain, right? The targeted bad guys. I mean, all of us who don't believe in the official story. We are somehow worse than all these liars, you know, and villains in the world and in this country. But somehow conspiracy theorists are the most dangerous people in the world. So I want everyone to really think about this, really think about what this means, because sometimes we, you know, we hear something and we say, yeah, wow, that's that sucks or, you know, that's pretty bad or whatever. And then just, you know, put it in the the junk heap of your mind or whatever, right? Your memory and your, you know, whatever it is, and you move on to something else. But just think of how upside down and backwards and inverted this is. Because the number one hunted group, the number one persecuted group, the number one group that is talked about, that's considered bad people and bad actors, is so-called conspiracy theorists, right? In a sea of villains... You know, in a world full of villains, if you turn on the news, they do this on CNN, they have whole shows devoted to this now. Social media, their algorithms have been skewed for one purpose, and that is to go after people who question the official story, so-called conspiracy theorists, people who don't believe in a government that has been caught lying over and over again, 
a media that basically, you know, 60% of what they say is deceptive and they just repeat the government's lies. I mean, these are proven liars, liars about big things like wars and the economy and, you know, whatever it might be, right? Diseases and, you know, any, any number of things. Science that's not really science, science that's been manipulated and bought and paid for by corporations, the military industrial complex, right? Lying about heroes, making up stories to get us into war, fabricating evidence, right? All this stuff. We've seen it over and over again. And then there's the so-called, you know, evil doers out there in the world. I mean, you look at the Taliban. We went to war. Everyone was so upset in 2001. And there was a war coming and everybody knew it. And we went all the way over to Afghanistan, a place where empires go to die. Right? <laughs> and we spent $2 trillion and destroyed that country to get rid of the Taliban. 80 billions of dollars in weapons and, you know. I mean, training and just all this stuff, infrastructure. <laughs> and so you know, nobody is being held accountable there. And then on social media, they're deplatforming truthers, but the Taliban is allowed to tweet, right? They can, they can, they have access to Twitter. <laughs> you know, there are criminals on the internet. I mean, of course, criminals want to use the internet, right? Pedo rings and then all kinds of cyber crime. All these things are going on. There's all these bad people out there, malicious people, sociopathic people. And the number one targeted group that needs to be silenced is so-called so conspiracy theorists, right? And so, you know, what does this tell you? Just think about this. I mean, this is a profound idea here that these liars, you know, I just covered um, the uh, movie, the HBO documentary called the crime of the century, which was about the opioid crisis, right? And there was, you know, doctors, lots of them, that went along and prescribed opiates. The FDA and all these agencies said that OxyContin was not addictive. It was, you know, told to people, doctors believed it, they were wined and dined and bought by the various um, pill pushers. There's the pill mills. 100,000 people died, and it was just, you know, cost all this money, and this is crisis, right? Completely immoral and done purposefully. You know, the science was there that this was going to be a disaster. We know about opium. It isn't like people are like, hey, what's this opium stuff? I wonder what it does, right? <laughs> We've seen it wreck countries before. In China, the British got the Chinese to be addicted to, to opium. I think it's still a, a thing, you know, the whole you know, Chinese mentality after that abuse by the British, right? The British East Indian Company was a, you know, a, a merchant, um, British merchant company that was in India. They took all this Indian gold and they turned it into opium and they went to China and got the Chinese addicted to opium. But we know what opium does. We know what heroin does. We know what these things do. And Johnson & Johnson has now created this company. Johnson & Johnson has created a poppy that's even, you know, produces more potent opium, and they're growing it legally in Tasmania for this purpose, right? And so there's this opiate crisis, and the government completely failed to protect the people. The medical community went along with it, the pharmaceutical community, all these various agencies went along with it. And the Sackler family, the Suckler family, they walked away with $5 billion. Their company, you know, got scrutinized. No one went to jail. No one was silenced. No one was deplatformed on social media. No one was charged with murder, manslaughter for 100,000 deaths for lying and pushing this, um, you know, destructive, who's hallucinogenic, on, addictive hallucinogenic on the American people. And of course, the opium came from Afghanistan. The Taliban had finally shut down production of opium in 2001. And that was probably the real reason for the war. And we went in there and, you know, opium production spiked in 2009 and 2010. The opium, opium crisis started in America. Same thing happened in Vietnam, right? Remember, there was a heroin crisis during Vietnam and after Vietnam because this opium was shipped in from Vietnam on military planes. This was well documented, right? Nobody got deplatformed. No one got censored. No one got, you know, 
punished for their wrongdoing. So there's lots of problems with the truth community. It's not even really a community. There's a lot of people who just suck at it. You know, there's lots of disinformation. But at its core, there are some people who are looking for the truth, who are, you know, discovering the more truthful narratives than the one that's been given by the liars in charge. And because of that, because of legitimate truth seekers, they're being silent, right? And this happens with saints and higher developed souls that come along and speak the truth, you know, that they are silenced, right? So this is the profound idea here, that if you lie, you're rewarded. But if you seek the truth or tell the truth, you're punished. Look at what happened to this, um, this uh, colonel in the military who spoke up and wanted accountability, and he got punished, right? He got fired, lost his pension, whatever else they're going to do to him. And, you know, he got punished for speaking the truth. While all these liars, the media, the government, the you know, army, all the military, the military industrial complex, the uh, corporations, medical, whatever it might be, right? All these stuff. They lie all the time, right? They get caught lying time and time again. They're not punished. They're rewarded. And so this is a fundamental principle of our system. And really think about this. I mean, because it's so simple, but it is, you know, everything you need to know. That lies feed our system. Lies keep our system going. The lies are something that keep our system moving along. But the truth would make our system collapse. I mean, that's why this is all the way it is. Just think about that, right? Our system is a lie. And it is, you know, every system inevitably has to collapse. I mean, think about the old empires of the past. I mean, we're still a continuation of the British Empire. You know, it's been around, I don't know, what is it? A thousand years? How long has Britain been in power? Not even that long, right? A couple hundred years. And so we're an extension of the British Empire. Well, America is 200 years old. So Britain was in power for, what, a couple hundred years before that. And we're an extension of the European British Empire. And it's not lasting. You look at Greece. I mean, a lot of these countries aren't even, don't even exist anymore. There was a time where in India was the, you know, the most powerful nation in the world in the Vedic era. And they, they still have some remnants of that government, but it's not the same. You know, Rome doesn't exist anymore, right? The Romans, the, the Greeks, I mean, these various types of powerful empires are, you know, they're just, um, they're just memories, right? Not even memories, they're historical, you know, see some runes here and there, but empires eventually collapse. America isn't going to always be the most powerful country, and there'll be a time where there's no such place as America. Right? There'll be a time in the very near future where America will disappear. I'm talking with possibly within 100 years that America won't be called America anymore. And there will be nothing that resembles American life here, right? The government won't be the same and the people will be different. And this place will be, you know, completely different than it is now. And in 100,000 years, people won't even remember there was an America, right? They won't remember anything from this time period. There'll be no historical evidence. I mean, unless there's some continuation of, you know, the videos that we have and things like that. If somehow some of that stuff gets saved in a, you know, collapse type situation. But a million years, I mean, two million years, you know, everything that's happening right now won't even be a memory. It'll exist in the Akashic record somewhere. And that's it. Like, it's just it'll all be gone. It'll be something completely different, right? It'll go through many different phases. Everything ends. And to keep our system going, a system that's based in lies and deceptions, lies and deception, we have to continue to lie. The government has to continue to lie. The media, bigger and better lies, and then all these illusions. It's lies that feed the beast, right? The beast is allowed to keep on living by illusions and lies. But the truth, you know, if people were aware of the truth, the beast would completely crumble. And most people in the truth community don't get that. They don't understand it. They just, you know, many of you listening to this just really don't understand it. You're always frustrated by why is it so warped? Why are the sociopaths always being rewarded? 
Why are the people that lie and do all these bad things never punished? Why are the people who try to tell the truth get, you know, erased and deplatformed and, you know, sometimes worse? Why are the people who are, you know, trying to get the truth out there fighting an uphill battle where they are, you know, being shut down on every level? I don't understand. Like, why is the truth, you know, because the truth would collapse the system. And there's no waking up everybody and then and then fixing the system with the truth. The system is a lie. It's always been a lie. You're just realizing it now. That there are good things and true things about our system, but they have been overshadowed by the deception. Our economy, the debt-based economy, is a lie. Your religion, our religion sucks. It's, you know, I mean, it's filled with depravity and it blocks people from connecting to God and it is about power and control and materialism and it isn't about God and, you know, connecting to God and anything spiritual. The religion sucks. The government has been completely corrupted. Our number one, I mean, in America, our number one export and our number one priority is weapons of mass destruction of all kinds, right, and military dominance. But the rest of the world, it's, you know, it's equally as bad, right? Every country on the world in the world has some sort of illusion as its center, as its, you know, base, as its fundamental building blocks of its existence. And our believing in these artificial constructs that America's the hero and that we're, you know, the good guys and every country believing these lies, right? The people buying into or at least knuckling under to the deception is what keeps it going. The system is based in perception. If people didn't believe in the system, if they realized how demented the system was and how evil it was, then it would collapse. We're keeping the system going with our collective consciousness and our feeding into the illusions and lies. And so if you woke everybody up, the system would collapse. And I don't want to do that. Right. I know the system is bad. I know the system is evil. I know it's time for it to go. I mean, it's divine providence for something good to be created. And I know from my experience with the heartfulness system for a system, a, you know, a government, a culture that is got a deep connection to God internally and built on fundamentally sound divine principles. And even a system like that won't last forever, but it's much more sustainable because it's aligned with your soul, everyone's soul. It's aligned with God and the divine laws and principles. And it's aligned with nature. It's not fighting against nature. It's not devouring nature. It's not creating illusions and rationalizations to justify things that you know deep inside are immoral and really, really reprehensible. I mean, that's what we're talking about here. So this system has to go, but I'm in no hurry for it to go. I mean, you know, we're all dependent on it. This is what we know. This is everything that we've, you know, become accustomed to. And so it'll collapse whenever it collapses. But there's no getting the truth out. Everyone has to reconcile within themselves. And most people can't do this. Most of you who are listening can't do this. The system can't be saved or fixed. It's a lie that feeds on lies, right? And it's allergic to the truth. The truth could bring the system down. And that's why they are the number one target is people who are calling themselves truthers. People searching for the truth are being targeted, you know, in an epic way right now, an embarrassing way, right? If you don't believe the liars, everyone knows they're liars, but if you don't go along with the lies, if you don't go along with what the system is trying to force on you, even, you know, even if you know it's wrong and bad for you or whatever it is, right, then you're a problem that you need to be censored you need to be you know shut down you're gonna be a person that could bring the system down but the system isn't going to come down because of conspiracy theorists the people i call the controllers are just paranoid right the system's coming down anyway you don't need to take it down what everyone needs to do is prepare for what's next right figure out what's going to happen next and align yourself with that because there'll be a new system with new energies, a new paradigm, with new intentions. And this is what the heartfulness system is creating, right? Everyone will know this in, you know, like 5,000 years. What I'm saying now will be common knowledge in terms of the way the things will evolve in the next 5,000 years or so. 
And so that's what I'm saying. Everyone in the truth community should just lighten up because you're being hunted and there's no reason for you to, you know, swim upstream for this thing. Getting the information out isn't going to change anything. It's not going to affect the system. You're not going to get some sort of, you know, I mean, you see this in the end of the Pat Tillman documentary where the family thinks that the Congress is finally going to, you know, hold the military you know, accountable and they don't. And the family's like, I don't understand. Well, you don't understand because, you know, not only was this a lie, but everything else about that war was a lie. I mean, it's just, you know, lies are rewarded. Lies keep the system going. There's, um, you know, a line from uh, Happy Days. I think I can get it right here. I'll go see if I can find it. The Fonz, you know, I guess um, these various um, teenagers were saying that they slept with, had relationship relations with some girl, right? Some girl who was known as being sort of easy in the 1950s. And Ronnie Howard, <laughs> Opie Cun Cunningham, lied about having relations with this girl, Richie Cunningham. <laughs> and he found out everyone else had lied. They all signed their name to some list on the, on the bathroom wall, right? And I don't know why I have such a vivid memory of this. It just popped in there. I didn't even know it was there, right? And then the Fon said, you know, I was talking to him about it. He said, because BS makes the world go round, right? So even back in the 70s, on a show that was about the 50s, that BS, right, makes the world go round. And that's, you know, everything you need to know. The lies keep the system going. And so I'm not, you know, upset about the lies. I've accepted the system the way it is. And I know that there's another solution. There are people who, you know, try the heartfulness system and, you know, who hear about the heartfulness system from this YouTube channel and are bummed out because it's not more of a truther organization. But the heartfulness system isn't about the material world. It's not about fixing the system. It's not about waking people up to the evils of the system. It's not about any of those things. It's something that's happened for me personally because of the heartfulness system, because of the teachings. There's teachings in there that are truths about you know electromagnetic poisoning and money power and the evil of all these various things and you know religion and you know all this stuff, right? I mean, those teachings are there and prophecies are there, but it's not about any of those things. It's about working on a subtle level to divinize people, help people to connect to God on a higher level. And when that happens, you know, when it happens, when it reaches critical mass, and I think it's about a third of the population reach a higher level of consciousness, which might take, you know, several, you know, multiple generations. I don't know how long that would take. And there's going to be eventually population reduction, which will help because there's a lot more, it'll be a lot more, um, a higher percentage of higher developed souls when the population is reduced. There's a lot of first timers, souls that are just moving up from the animal kingdom that have incarnated for the first time as a human. And so, and when this happens, the whole system will change because people will be resonating on a higher level of consciousness and they'll, you know, manifest a completely different world. And so it isn't about dealing with the problem. This problem, you know, is just something that's going to be left behind historically after the system collapses and people rise up to a higher level of consciousness. It's not necessary to do any truther mumbo jumbo. You know, the truther stuff is just for you to understand or me to understand, or any, you know, all of us to understand that the system that we, you know, 100% dependent on is built on lies. Like, uh, that's all you need to know, right? That everything that, you know, the system churns out is a deception because it's built on a deception, right? It's fundamental building blocks and principles of materialism and debt-based economy and, you know, focusing on, you know, so-called hedonistic and sensory stimulation pleasures and things like this instead of living the lives our souls want us to live is just wrong from the very beginning. Everything that our system, you know, tries to focus on, you know, the point of life and celebrity and all these things I point out here, these celebrity ghouls and all that stuff, it's just a lie. It's not true. And it just leads to broken hearts and 
you know, disillusionment and failure and, you know, disconnect from God and the breaking down of the family and more and more layers of depravity. And so, so few people are able to, you know, realize this, even though it's right there in front of us all. And then what are you going to do? Well, you can change yourself. You can begin to, you know, raise your level of consciousness, raise your level of your, you know, relationship with God, create a more loving heart. This is what the heartfulness meditation system does for people. If they use it correctly, if they, you know, follow the, the practice and they do it assiduously and they work on their characters and they focus on self-improvement, not in some superficial way like you build a brand, like you fake it, but doing it on a deep level. Become a kinder person, become a better person, become a you know more giving and loving person who's service-oriented instead of some hedonistic, narcissistic diva, you know, that wants to be, you know, like Madame Expiration Date, who wants to be fed by the masses and can never be satisfied by their material success. And so this is why just understanding that the system is fed by lies. It is, its fuel is lies and deception. And truth is the kryptonite to the system. The system cannot exist with truth in it. So it has to go out after anybody who tells it. Only spirituality will save this world. It's Paul Romano, definitely reporting from the Apocalypse and the Ascension. Everyone have a blessed day and be grateful.